number one is that my rehab is strength and cardio. So people often ask, why are you out of breath in your videos? Like <laughs> this thing smokes you. So it's got resistance. I'm in a knee over toe position. That was found to be the position that puts pressure on the knee. Well, this allows you to safely get better at that position so you're more protected. I originally did it dragging a sled, but now I made this thing so that I can get the benefits of a sled from home. It actually allows you to go to easier levels, meaning like you can put your hands on the side. So when people in the gym at our HQ are struggling with the sled, like if it's an older person, they can't balance, I put them on here, then they can get into it. And at a higher level, I don't have to turn around. So I do a three minute sprint. And I say sprint because by the end of three minutes, I'm probably like, like this, but I do a three minute sprint to start workouts. And I mean, that's it. That's the first thing I do. There's nothing else I have to do. So the amount of metabolic effect, like just how much it challenges the body every workout I do is pretty insane. And it's making me more protected so that in life I can do the things I want to do. Then my mood is higher. Now I'm not as likely to reach for junk food to feel better, which is what I used to do. So this got me off painkillers for my knees and I've really been fit ever since, but this is the foundation of it. You could just walk backward on land. That would still burn more calories than walking forward. You could even, if you had a safe place, you could maybe jog backward. You could get a cheap sled to drag. Bear in mind, this is much cheaper than a gym treadmill, but even your gym treadmill, you might be able to put your butt against the handle. It won't be that comfortable, so put a towel there, and it might have some resistance. So that actually might work right from any gym right now. So that's the foundation, is my knee, the foundation of my knee rehab is actually incredibly challenging, burning fat, strengthening muscles. Number two, I train myself to be stronger than the norm below my belly button. So yes, people wanna know about actual core training. The simplest example, and I'll show you, you could start this without anything. I like these, but you could start without anything. This would take strength beyond the norm below the belly button. So you have the six pack, a common weak link is below the belly button. When you're weak below the belly button, the lower back, the hips are more vulnerable to injury. I'll show you how Alyssa works on this from the yard, allows her to smoothly scale. So she goes here, boom, contracts one side, down, contract one side, down. Below the belly button is actually where Alyssa lost the most strength after having two kids. And some of the ice skating moves that she has to do, um, like when she sits on one leg and spins around, she has to be pretty strong in there. She thinks it's really important for women who've had kids in order to protect the back. Like you wouldn't wanna be weak on the other side of the low back. Now there was a common misconception of don't strengthen this area because you don't wanna get tight. But as we'll look at in number five, as my last video was all on this, the ATG split squat allows you to lengthen those hip flexors. So those hip flexors attach from your lower spine into your hip and even connect to the leg. A common tight area and a common weak area. So I think of my core as like, I want this just armor around it so that I don't get hurt, so I can stay active. So it's actually less superficial, more on the function side, but tons of ATGers now are like, oh wow, you know, my, my core looks really good. Well, this is how we do it. This was the simplest example to show you. My overall favorite is the low cable pull-in. It takes a very specific setup. I used to set up my gym. So you have a cable stack with something immovable behind it so you can lay down and it's like doing the reverse of a squat. So I'm talking about measurable loading like to failure. So instead of failing to squat, it's failing to reverse squat. Dang, that hits so deep, feels incredible. But for my yard, it's not as practical. So I use this and I use a gar hammer raise where you hang and you use the weight of your legs to essentially do a reverse crunch. All right, moving on, lower back. So I train my lower back for strength and time. Compare this to what we usually think of as a deadlift. Normally you drop the weight down. So here I'm staying under tension. Now for the record, I think it's fine to drop the weight down. I actually have no don't when it comes to exercise. I focus on the do and I do think that controlling that time and tension and strength through the low back should be the foundation. Number four, I train my QL, quadratus lumborum quad. Think four, it's like a four-sided muscle, lumborum of the lumbar spine, the lower spine. I train that bad boy to be stronger and more flexible than the norm. This thing is a secret weapon, not only for rotational power, 
but for lower back protection. So if you're stronger than norm on this side of your low back, on this side of your low back, on this side of your low back, I mean, you want that stronger than the norm and more flexible than the norm. What does that give you? It gives you more ability. So my whole game in life is helping people without pain in the process to get more ability so then they have less pain to do life activities. It's still human, it's still, you know, human life ain't gonna be in the clouds, but it could be so much different from what it is. The drugs and surgeries needed to get by could be fundamentally different than what it is currently by understanding ability. So there's four out of five. And the fifth, it has to be said, is that my mobility work is also fat burning and muscle strengthening. So, okay, it would start like this. Let's think about how much demand this is. Well, this is some demand I'm stretching, strengthening. But now let's compare. Years and years have gone by. I've been working on this for 10 years. So now I get to jump in here, stretching my back hip flexors, strengthening the front leg. This takes a ton of focus and energy. This is my mobility work. That backward treadmill sprinting, that is my warm up. So my warm up and my mobility become incredibly challenging for the body. But this also happens to be the number one stretch strength training, the number one long-term investment I've put in my body to not be as fragile as a normal body. So I haven't had a knee setback in 10 years, even though say me was hooked on painkillers. Having knee surgeries told I needed more knee surgery. So say me just changed how I train by understanding ability. No fear of the body, understanding of the body, hence being knees over toes guy, because the number one thing we're told not to do with our knee is knee over toes. And arguably the number one most helpful thing you could do for your knee would be to understand and improve your ability in knees over toes. So I'll shut up for now, but hopefully you can see a theme here that I never want to be sidelined. Being sidelined to me is a huge problem. Not being, oh, I have to avoid my back. I have to avoid my knee. I have, all these things that we have to avoid, it reduces how much actual burning our body is doing. Now, guaranteed there will be diet questions, so I'll answer in advance. I don't think I have any special diet knowledge to share with you. The only thing I feel passionate enough to share is that I see the biggest barrier we all face is how much money can be made on processed food. So did you make billions of dollars last year processing food? And look, even if you did, you probably got your reasons, but did you? Probably the majority of us watching this did not make billions. So this line right here, we're on this side, we are getting beaten by advertising and mouthwatering and cheap and satisfy all this stuff of processed food. I think that's the number one barrier. And I will never be mean to someone for choosing different foods than me. That's my only game on the diet thing. It's helping people be aware of that burden. So what I do for my family and I is I aim for like an 80-20. I don't keep processed stuff in the house. I try to keep us at least 80% real foods. And then that 20%, because it's out there, it's real. I think it's better to have the ability to enjoy it, but not be addicted to it. I'm not even saying this is the right way. This is just, this is what works for us. And there's no doubt that eating at least 80% of real food helps my core muscles to be visible compared to the average American, which is now over 50% of the caloric intake, ultra processed. So that's the only thing I feel passionate to say on the diet side. I hope this entire video helps improve the rest of your life. Um, I can't thank you enough for joining me in the yard today. See you later.